So, hey, do you know that feeling when you realize Blender has an array modifier, but only after you've copied and pasted 1742 tiny bolts and placed them in a row on the side of your awesome new CG spaceship? Well, me neither. But anyway, efficiency is important, and that's why I'll now share with you my 5 tips on how to speed up your workflow in Blender. Tip number 1. Change settings for multiple objects at once. Well, when you have to do the same thing for multiple objects, it can be a very tedious process. For instance, if you want to draw the wireframe for, for a lot of objects, you would normally have to go through them one by one and then click wire. But um, instead use alt clicking. So first of all, you will have to select all the objects you want to, to draw the wireframe on or, or apply this option to. Then go to the, to the settings and hold down alt and then click, for instance, wire. So this option will be applied to all these objects at once. This works with modif modifiers as well, for instance the mirror modifier. You can see it, it gets mirrored on the z-axis. So as far as I know this works for all object specific operations. Tip number two, using the bevel modifier to control subdivision. When modeling with the subdivision surface modifier, a lot of people use loop cuts to control the edges. You could also uh, use the bevel modifier, put it above the subdivision surface modifier, and then uh, control the strength with the width and the segments. If you don't want to, to sharpen all the edges, you can press the weight button and then select the edges you want to sharpen and then sharpen them with the mean bevel weight. So, drivers are awesome. For my AMG engine, I used a lot of drivers to make everything procedural. I couldn't just, you know, animate something by hand because then I, then I would not be able to control it afterwards. For instance, right here, the driver is very, very simple. It takes the location of this object right here, then does some magic, and turns it into a scale value for this for the local C axis for this spring. So basically, I know that this value, the location of this uh, object right here, it goes from zero to one to zero. So I want this to to go to 0 0.75 or something, and then you just use very, very basic math to to get the value you want. So I also did this for this um, this I don't know what it is this object right here with an if and else statement. So I don't want to go through this. I just want to show that you can actually use if else statements uh, inside the drivers. So first of all, you have the um, the result kind of and then the conditions in here and you can even write AND to make a second condition. Tip number four, double the render speeds using frame steps. When rendering test animations for an, a for an animation you can spend a lot of time waiting for Blender to, to render your test animations. So instead of rendering every single frame in your test animation you can just choose to render every second or every third or fourth even frame to save yourself some time. When you do, Blender just skips um, four frames ahead each time and renders a lot faster. Tip number five, use custom transform orientations. When you're modeling something that has a very special or weird shape, it's sometimes very, very useful to use a custom transform orientation. For instance, if I want to move this object right here, instead of moving it with a global, uh, with a global transform orientation, which can be pretty difficult, uh, I can make my own transform orientation because I want it to move accordingly to this face right here. So, select the face you want uh, you want to get the transform orientation from, then choose normal and click the plus button. And now I can call this whatever I want. So, now you can use this new uh, transform orientation to move um, this part of the object right here. And when you do, you can see it moves accordingly to the face. Thank you for watching my tutorial 5 quick tips in Blender in less than 5 minutes. If you want more stuff like this, please let me know in the comments below. And if you think it was horrible, then... well... <laughs> Anyways, this stuff is pretty new to me, and even though English is quite the challenge for me, I decided to do a voiceover for this tutorial. So sorry for all the words I pronounced wrong and the sentences that didn't make sense. If you have any suggestions, critiques or anything of the like, please let me know. Nothing more to say then, have a good day people.